Alright guys, what's up? My name is Yapo, and today I will be giving you a crash course in Blood Bowl Legendary Edition. It's a game by the game developer Cyanide, but it's about a game called Blood Bowl. Blood Bowl is originally a turn-based strategy by Games Workshop, based loosely in the Warhammer Fantasy universe. So you've got elves and dwarves and all sorts of other fun stuff here. And it's a turn-based strategy. It's kind of an interesting cross between uh, American football, rugby, and trying to kill as many people as possible. The objective of the game is to score more touchdowns than your opponent in a game. Each game consists of two halves. Each half consists of eight turns for each player. And so you get 16 turns for the game to try and score more touchdowns than your opponent. It's also a bit interesting in that each player in the game has a level. And as you do skills that are important to the game, like making a touchdown or killing somebody, it will upgrade your player's level. And as your player upgrades, they can get more and more skills that help them out. Sorry for that. If I idle too long on the menu, it jumps into the thing. Alright, well, let's take a look at the teams available to us in Blood Bowl Legendary Edition. And I will tell you a little bit about them. Alright, so we're here now on the team screen for Blood Bowl Legendary Edition, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the different teams available to us. First off, we've got humans. They're your basic run-of-the-mill, okay-at-everything team. They don't have any particularly standout skills or abilities, but they do have the ability to kind of counteract every team they play with. They're not great at punching, they're not great at handling the ball, but they're not bad at either one either. Alright, now we've got dwarves. The, besides having awesome mohawks, dwarves are very slow, but very good at punching people. They're also not great at handling the ball. So dwarves' strategy generally is to grab the ball and kind of move slowly across the field for an entire turn. That's kind of a counterpoint to the dwarves. We have Skaven. Skaven are giant rats that are very quick and not real great at punching or being punched, but they are very quick and very good at handling the ball. So what happens in Skaven games is you generally end up scoring a lot of touchdowns, but generally sustain several injuries. Orcs in this game are your pretty traditional high fantasy orcs. They like punching. They like red. They uh, are very good at punching. They're considered one of the better starting teams for players who want to try and play a punching game. Okay at moving the ball, a little on the slow side. Punching's their main draw. We have Lizardmen, which are a little interesting because we have big guys called the Saurus, which is very good at punching. He can knock all sorts of guys down, but he can't hardly handle the ball to speak of. He can take punches pretty well, too. And then you've got little guys here called Skinks. Now, Skinks are very fast, pretty good at handling the ball, but can't punch or take a punch to save their life. So you get an interesting setup with a bunch of real big strong guys and a bunch of little guys who get beat to a pulp. Alright, next we've got goblins. Goblins big gimmick is they have a bunch of secret weapons that they use to try and take other players out of the game. This guy's got bombs he can throw. We've got a guy here with a chainsaw that he can use against other players. And the goal of goblins really is to knock a bunch of your opponent's players out of the games before they get a chance to do the same to you with your secret weapons here, like a chainsaw, because that's pretty effective for getting people out. Next we have Wood Elf, which is the first of the four elf teams in the game. They also have excellent Mohawks. But Wood Elves are considered to be one of the better teams in the game. They are very, very good at moving the ball around the field, like most elves. And they have a couple players that can throw punches decently well, but they don't take a hit very well. They've got they're fairly weak to being punched, so and tend to die with relative frequency. Chaos are a big strong punchy team and the only team I will not be playing in this LP, because Seekonor has a Chaos LP that has 30-some-odd games as of right now, so if you're really interested in watching a Chaos game, you can go check those out. Dark Elf are one of the other good Elf teams. Um, Dark Elf are very good at moving the ball around, like all the Elves, but they also are a little tougher, a little harder to take off the field, and have a lot of really good skills and skill access that they can get. Undead are a fairly punchy middle-of-the-road team. They've got a bunch of skills that help keep their guys alive and on the field. 
And they also have a few guys who are decent at handling the ball. Not as good as elves, uh, probably not even as good as humans, but still overall decent at handling the ball. And then pretty strong at punching and being punched. We've got halflings, which are another sort of gimmick team. You've got a bunch of little guys who are good at moving the ball around and moving around players without getting caught. But they, if they do take a square hit, they go down in a hurry. But you also have the tree, or you also have two treemen on a halfling team who are the biggest and strongest players in the game. So he can lay down a fair bit of hurt as well as throw halflings at other players to try and injure them. Halflings also have the gimmick of a it's called a halfling master chef, and what a halfling master chef does is steals rerolls from your opponent and gives them back to you. And I'll explain rerolls here in just a little bit when we get to the game part, but basically it's a very good thing to have and only halflings really get it. Here we have Norse. Norse are my personal favorite team. I've got like four or five Norse teams that I'm working with right now. Uh, Norse are very good at punching, but also tend to die in a very big hurry. Makes them a bit strange, since most of the punchy teams are also fairly tough, can take a punch well. They move the ball about as well as humans can. They're a little slower than humans overall, but can put down a lot more pain than humans can. Next we have Amazon, which are similar to Norse in that they can't take a punch very well at all, but they start with a slightly different skill set and are considered to be a pretty good team. Um, they play kind of funky at first because they all start with an ability called Dodge, which we'll cover later, but they are a decently punchy team but can't take a hit. Here we have regular elves. Um, game, Cyanide calls them regular elves. You'll also hear them referred to as pro-elf teams. They have a pretty good running game. They can move the ball just as well as any other elves, and they're kind of the most generic elf team as far as skills go. Next so we have high elf, who, if you notice, have very lovely hats there. High elves are tougher than regular elves, the same toughness as dark elves, so they're a little harder to kill. And uh, a little have a few different skills. Basically, if people are interested in the elf team, I'll post some more breakdowns of them, but they're pretty... I mean, they all play fairly similarly. Next, we have Kimri. Uh, Kimri are very tough, very strong, but cannot hardly move the ball around to save their lives. They're very bad at doing anything involving the ball, but they have a bunch of players who punch really hard, and then they also have skill that helps keep them on the field, several skills that help keep them on the field when they get punched. Necromantic is almost identical to the undead team, except that instead of for, er, you get this player who's a specialty player for Necromantic. This player is very quick, he's a werewolf. He's also pretty darn good at punching guys. So he becomes a scoring threat with his speed, and then a death threat with punching a bunch of guys around. Next we have Nurgle, who are a chaos team with mutations from the Plague Bearer, Nurgle. I personally hate Nurgle because playing as them, playing against them, because they have a bunch of skills that prevent you from playing the game. Uh, I'll explain those more if people want, but basically Nurgle have a tendency to stand in the middle of the field and punch guys for 16 turns straight. Next we have Ogres. Ogres are another somewhat gimmicky team. Um, like Lizardmen, they have a bunch of really big, strong guys. Uh, ogres are actually even stronger than the s big guys on the Lizardmen team. They also have the smallest, weakest players in the game in Snotlings, which, if you can tell looking at the size of the ball compared to this guy, everyone is huge relative to him. Generally, in an Ogre game, all of your Snotlings will be injured or out of the game by the end. So, it's kind of an interesting team to play. Vampires are also another somewhat gimmicky interesting team. Um, their main units are the vampires here, who are very strong, very good at punching, very good at moving the ball around, but the problem is they get thirsty from time to time, and that can really mess up your plans. So what happens is they have to go bite one of these guys, and they actually have the potential to take him out of the game for the rest of the game by biting him. If you can't get to one of these guys to bite him, your vampire runs off into the off the pitch into the stands to bite some young maiden and you can't use him until the next kickoff when you can put it back in the game. So vampires have a little bit of trouble with that, but some good player but the vampires themselves are pretty good players. 
Alright, so that's a quick rundown of the teams. I'm gonna jump over to the uh, I'm gonna jump over to the team section real quick and tell you a little more about stats and team composition. Alright guys, this is the team purchasing page for a human team. Each Blood Bowl team consists of anywhere between 11 and 16 players, 11 being the minimum number required to start a match. Sometimes you'll end up with fewer, but you got to start with 11, and 16 being the maximum number of roster slots you have. Each team has a certain number of types of players available. Almost every team will have some kind of lineman available. You can see human lineman here. And uh, most of the time you can get almost an entire team of linemen, which is kind of a bad idea. They, this, since this is a human team, they also have a blitzer, four blitzers available, four catchers, two throwers, and an ogre. As you can see, I have one million dollars I can spend, and each player has a certain price that I have to pay to hire them. As a general rule, the higher the salary of a player, the better they are, but that's just kind of a guideline. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at the human lineman, who's one of the more average players in the game, and I will describe what you're looking at here. First, we've got his stats, this big bar right here. MA6, it says 6 movement. Any turn, if he's standing up on the field, he can move up to 6 spaces without having to do anything, which is good. That's somewhat in the middle. The Blood Bowl pitch is 13 spaces long, so he can get from the middle to one end in about 2 turns. There are some units that are a lot faster, up to 9, and there are some units that are a lot slower. Uh, trees only have 2 movement. They're not real quick on the uptake. The next skill we have here is Strength. And strength is a measure of how good you are at punching other guys. Most normal sized guys in the game are going to have strength 3. That's a pretty standard strength. And we'll discuss strength uh, as far as it relates to punching guys a little more later, but basically the higher the strength, the better they are at punching. Next skill we've got here is agility. And this particular player has agility 3, which is pretty standard for normal players. Elves all start with agility 4. So their agility skill here is what controls how well you move the ball, how, how easy it is for you to pick up the ball, how easy it is for you to get away from other players. So elves have a bit of an advantage with all that agility around as far as moving the ball and getting away from being punched. The next stat here is armor value, and this particular lineman has armor value 8. Armor value is basically how tough they are when they get knocked down. When any time a player falls down on the ground, if he fails to dodge and falls over, or if he gets punched and falls over or something, you roll against his armor value, 2d6. And if you beat his armor value with 2d6, you get to roll an injury on him. And that's a good thing if that he's on the opposing team, because injuries take players out of the game. So a high armor value means that they're going to be tougher and stay on the field longer, and a low armor value means they're more likely to die a horrible death. Now, what we have over here are his list of skills. Unfortunately, human, line, uh, human linemen do not come with any skills. What they do, er, so I can't tell you about any of those, but I can tell you about the skill categories. When I said each player levels up, as they level up, they roll two dice, and if the dice are the same number, they get what's called a double. And for a human, he can get any of these four, strength, general, agility, or passing, on a double. Or if he just rolls a regular, he can also get a gen or if he just rolls like a, for example a one and a two, he can get a general skill. General skills are fairly good. They have a very good range of things they can do, but they aren't as specialized as like strength or agility or passing skills are. Uh, you can note there's one here that's grayed out, that's mutation. Mutations are generally available to only a very few teams and are generally pretty good. Chaos, Nurgle, and Skaven, I believe, can get mutations. Uh, Skaven have to get mutations on a double roll, uh, where Chaos and Nurgle can get them regularly. Alright, so now that I've told you a little bit about the stats, we're going to go back and look here at the Human Catcher um, to show you a little bit of the difference in stats. Human Catchers are a lot faster. They have movement 8, but they're less strong. They're not nearly as good as Punching Dudes. They've only got strength 2. Same agility, but they do have uh, a few skills to help with the agility rolls. 
and armor value 7, so they're substantially easier, so they're a little easier to kill if, you, if they fall down. Um, unlike like humans, they have general access on a normal level up, but they also get agility skill access on a normal level up. Passing and strength still take a double, but he actually starts with a couple skills he'll use. He starts with the dodge skill, which I'll talk to you about a little later, and the catch skill, which helps you catch ball, you might imagine. So that's a little bit about the stats of these teams. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump into a hot seat game with myself, and I will tell you a little bit about Cyanide's UI, some of the basic skills that you need to know for the game, and a little bit about all the actions that can happen in a turn. Alright, here we are on the loading screen. Be a human versus a vampire game. I just chose vampires because they're fairly easy to distinguish from humans, and that way I can show off a couple of the skills humans have, which are some of the ones that you're going to see more often in the game, that they become fairly important. Um, this is also a little tutorial for you on the cyanide UI. It's got a bunch of little symbols down here that will show up on the right side of the screen. I'll explain these to you as I'm setting up my players here. choose a coin, and I want to let the vampires kick here. Alright, so right now, every kickoff, we roll a die and figure out what the weather's going to be like right now. As you can see by the log here, the weather is pouring rain, which gives a minus one modifier to pick up or catch rolls. And all I'm going to do here is spread some guys out, because I'm just going to do a little bit of punching to show you what's what in this game. Alright, there are all my vampires, and I want to move some humans around here. Alright, so, sorry, I was moving around some guys. Um, what I'm doing here is going to set up a couple blocks to show you how uh, some skills and some basic tenants work. Um, also here in the UI, you get a little list of what all you've got going along here. And running from top to bottom, top here are spells, which you might see in some later game for uh, players. You get apothecaries, which allow you to reroll an injury if you get an injured player. Have bribes, which if you try and foul or have a secret weapon and get caught by the referee, you can try and bribe him. Have our little blitz symbol here, and I'll show you a blitz here in just a little bit. Have our cheerleaders, which help with some of the uh, event rolls that happen on a kickoff. Fame, which also helps with event rolls on kickoff. Assistant coaches, more event roll kickoff help. Bloodweiser babes, which help with recovering knocked out players uh, after or before kickoffs. And then we have halfling master chefs, which I talked about a little bit before, but still rerolls. Over here we've got our reroll counters and score. And the bottom right corner here, got our log. This is our kickoff event. Um, each kickoff there's a potential event, and this particular one is cheering fans. You roll with your, you roll a d6, add your fame and your cheerleaders, and whoever comes out higher gets an extra reroll. It's pretty handy. Rerolls are always good. Um, as you can see, uh, both teams got an extra reroll there. Or, I'm sorry, vampires got an extra reroll, and the human team actually has a guy with the skill leader, which adds uh, an extra team reroll. Up here is our turn counter. It's the human turns first here. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about basic skills. Um, this guy has a skill called block. Block is a very good skill when you're throwing blocks, if somewhat boring, because it keeps you from uh, getting yourself in trouble. It helps negate one of the results that would cause you a turnover. Anytime you get a player knocked down in a turn or fail an action, you lose a turnover. Like if I were to try and run and pick up this ball, and I were to drop it, I would cause a turnover. So, what I'm going to try and do is do stuff that's I want to do first. It's important before I go and try and pick up the ball. So, how blocks in this game work are you can do any number of blocks you want in the game, just like you can do any amount of any amount of free movement you want. Like I can move as many of these guys around as I want for free back here. And uh, blocks, I can throw as many of as I want, as long as I am standing next to the person when I start. Now, there are a few skills that change this, including what's called a blitz. I'll show you here in just a second. But you also have what are called assists on block. Um, 
for blocks, you m compare your strength to the player's strength. If they're the same strength, you roll one die. If one player is stronger, you roll two. And if one player is more than twice as strong, you roll three. Now, if you are the stronger player when you roll the two dice, you get to pick. If your opponent is the stronger player when they roll the dice, they get to pick. That's a very bad thing to happen, because they don't want their player going down, they want your player going down. So generally, you don't want to throw what are called negative blocks, where your opponent gets to pick what's going on. Now, as you can see down here in his little stat bar, this is a human blitzer who's strength 3, and this is a thrall who's also strength 3. So, um, if they were to just be standing there, he would only get one dice. But, in Blood Bowl, there's also a thing called assists, where any player standing not next to another person can provide an assist on the block and inf increase the strength of that player by one. So when I click on him here, you'll see this little green uh, explosion looking thing, and that signifies that this player is giving an assist for this block. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this block. Now there are six possible block results. There is what we call skull, which is attacker down. There are no skills to stop that. If you get two skulls here and you got to pick one, your player goes down and you cause a turnover. Uh, there's also what's called both down, which is a little skull with a little explosion next to it. And that can be stopped by the block skill here, which is why it's so good. Ano there are two sides of the dice that are push, and you just push a player one square. There is this one, which is called defender stumbles, or pow push. And what happens is that this will knock them over unless they have the skill called dodge, which this guy also has. This is my player and this is the opponent, but dodge will prevent this from knocking a player over. So dodge is also a good skill to have if you plan on getting punched a lot. There's one last one that's just a yellow explosion, and that's called pow. And there's no skills that stop a pow from putting an opponent down. So, do you want to always roll pows if you're rolling blocks, and you always want your opponent to roll, roll skulls. So then when I throw out the block, it gives me where I can push him. And I'll just follow that guy up here. And that's the basics of blocking. Um, as I was saying, if the strengths are the same, like this guy's got three strength, and so does this guy, it will only allow you to roll one die. And so, I went ahead and used a reroll there to show you what those do. And I rolled a skull, so I gotta take it. I can only use one reroll per turn. And once you use that reroll, that's all you get. So right now it's got me switched over to controlling the vampire team. I'm just gonna go ahead and end the turn here so I can show you some more stuff with the humans. Um, in addition to blocking, you can also, in addition to blocking the players that are, you're standing next to, once per turn you can do what's called a blitz. Uh, you can come over here and you, can, you get the big yellow explosion, and if you click on someone the little lightning bolt appears over their head, and that tells you you're blitzing. Or you can click on the little lightning bolt over here, and the lightning bolt up here tells you you're blitzing. What blitzing allows you to do is move and throw a block in the same turn. So, it's very useful, and sometimes the only block you'll get in a turn is your blitz block. So you generally want to use those wisely. And what I'm about to show you here is what's called a crowd surf. Um, what happens when you knock a player down is you roll for armor, as you can see here in the log. And if you beat the armor value, what'll happen is you'll roll for an injury. Now. Crowd surfing uh, skips the roll for the armor because they push an opponent out of bounds, and the little fluff is the fans come out of the stands and beat the crap out of that guy. So you don't even make a roll for armor, you make a roll directly for injury. It's a good way to get the numerical advantage on the field as well as injure players easily. So I'm going to go ahead and blitz this guy here and try and push him out of bounds, which there's a push. So I'll shove him out of bounds. And every block you have, you have the ability to follow up. Um, basically, step into the space they were occupying, or stay where you're standing. I'm going to go ahead and follow him up there. And the little bell means he got knocked out. Now, this is my apothecary dialogue. I can use that apothecary to try and cure his injury. Since it's only a knocked out, I'm not going to do that. He might be fine later in the game. As a general rule, people will not use the apothecary unless the injuries are very bad because in Blood Bowl you have the very real risk of people dying in an absolute hurry. And that's not something you want to have happen. Alright, so 
one of the other skills I want to show you here is a skill called dodge. Um, dodge allows you to a avoid defender stumbles, or, uh, dice results, and just treat them like a push. It also allows you to, anytime you move away from an opposing tackle zone, which are these yellow things here, you have to make an agility roll to check and see if you got away without them grabbing you. Dodge allows you to re-roll an agility or a failed dodge roll if you're trying to get away. Like see right there, I failed my dodge roll and then the player automatically uses dodge and rerolled and managed to get away successfully. So dodge is also a very useful skill in that capacity. So the blitz you can do once a turn. Once per turn you can also do what's called or you can do a handoff and a pass. Only one handoff and one pass per turn. So if you set it up you can actually move a very long distance down the field with first a handoff and then a pass or one then the other. So I'm going to try and pick up this ball here, which might be a little hard since it's raining. And what you saw there was sure hands, which is like dodge. It just gives you a free reroll, but it's for picking up the ball. Normally, a three would work because I would get a plus one for pickup, and it would be four, and I would beat the four here. But since it's pouring rain, it makes the ball harder to pick up, and I can't do it. Now, other things that make the ball harder to pick up are opposing tackle zones. So like... Right now I'm controlling the vampire team, which is why it switched sides on me. So if I went and tried to pick up this ball right now, I would get a minus one modifier because it's in the thrower's tackle zone here. So generally, you want to, if you're trying to get the ball, you want to move any opposing players away from it so you get the best chance you can at picking the ball up. So I'm going to see if I can do this again here. And he fails again. Um, picking up the ball can be very, very challenging, as you can tell. Since I'm already over here, I'm going to go ahead and show you a different mechanic. Um, when you click on a player, you get this big green square, and this is how far they can move every turn. Um, he's got six movements, so he can move up to six bases, and there's six for him. Now, what happens when you move your whole thing is you get these little dice. Now, what these are called are going for it. You can move up to two extra spaces, per turn by making rolls for going for it. A going for it is a 2 plus roll, so it's fairly safe. However, most players find that their going for it's fail a lot of the time. So, look at the log here as we go. He rolled a 4 and a 2, so he managed to make it all the way without falling over. Which is a pretty good job. And you can do as many going for it's as you want in the game, any turn, but you just gotta keep making the dice roll. He made it. Uh, he made it as well. Um, if you fail, you're going for it. You fall over and make an armor roll like you normally would. So it allows you to uh, make a little extra movement, but at some amount of risk. All right. Let me see if I can pick up this ball again here. Nope. Still not having any of it. So while we're waiting on that to work, I am going to go ahead and show you a different mechanic. In addition to one blitz, one throw, and one handoff per turn, you can do what's called one foul. Now, the fluff in Blood Bowl tells us foul is putting a boot to a down opponent, so we get the little boot icon here. And uh, just like blocks, if we have unmarked players, we get assists. However, for a foul, you don't roll dice against a block dice, you roll dice directly against the opponent's armor. And if you break the opponent's armor, you roll for injury like normal. It basically gives you a free chance to, chance to try and hurt players. Now, there is a risk with throwing a foul. If the referee catches you, you get ejected from the game, can't play the rest of it, and you get a turnover. Now, what happens on a block? You see that block? I broke armor with two sixes and then rolled a KO. What happens is if you roll doubles, like two sixes, or if I rolled a 2 and a 2 on the injury table, the referee spots you and ejects you, which is why that guy just had an exclamation point appear over his head and ran off the field over here. But I also managed to take that player off of the field with that foul. So fouls can be a tactical thing that you do um, to try and keep players from getting... Uh, to keep good players out of the game with your cheap players. Alright, now that this guy's finally got the ball, 
you can do what's called a handoff, which is he runs over and hands it directly to him. Handoffs are generally safer than throws because they are always accurate, and so the guy catching it gets a plus one to his catch. Now, as you see there, he's got the catch skill. So he gets, the first time he actually failed to catch it, but then the catch skill allows him to re-roll that catch and hold on to the ball. Like I said, you can do both a catch and a pass in the same turn. So I'm going to run over here. And the little rings that show up around here is how hard it is to pass. So like, it's a pretty easy pass to this guy. He's right over here. It's a pretty hard pass to this guy way over here. And if I were to try and throw it way down over here somewhere, it would, or if, I were, if you were way over here, it would be really hard. So I'm going to go ahead and try and throw a pass to this guy to see if it works. Now, passing is more dangerous because you have both a launch and a catch roll. Uh, both agility rolls, as you can see down here. He failed to launch it, so I'm going to go ahead and try and reroll it. Now that time, he didn't launch it very well, but he kind of got it in the general neighborhood. And since he dropped the ball, I get a turnover. So hopefully, that explains most of the general mechanics of the game to you. I know there's a lot of stuff to take up, but as long as you can remember how assists work for blocking, and that you get, um, like for example, this guy is not very uh, same strength, so he only gets one block. But if I bring this guy over here, he gets an extra strength for that block, so I get to roll two and that you get one blitz, one pass, one handoff, and one foul per turn, you should be pretty good off. Hopefully this has been a bit of an enlightenment for you, and hopefully you'll enjoy the rest of this thread. Have a good one.